welcome students in the previous part of this lecture we have learned how to draw front view and top view of this particular problem in first angle of projection so in this lecture we will plot front view and top view on the grid sheet so for that what we have to do first of all we have to sketch a reference line and take the length of that reference line round 10 centimeters and label capital X capital Y on both sides of that reference line and we have to represent the quadrant of the problem that is first quadrant so above the reference line we will mention VP and below the reference line we will mention HP and we need to plan our space carefully see uh, over here height is given to us as 48 millimeters and we know in the front view we have to represent height of the object and plus in the front view we have to leave some gap from the reference line and we have to add few dimensions also at the top for the object so we made a thumb rule in the very first lecture that whatever height we have for the object add around 30 millimeters in that height and you should have at least that much space above the reference line so over here uh, the height of the object is 48 so if I add 30 into it so I will get 78 means minimum 80 millimeter space I should have above the reference line. Similarly below the reference line we need space equal to the width of the object plus we have to add 30 mm as allowance for the gap between the reference line and the object plus for the dimensions which we have to place. So like this you should plan your space on the grid sheet then you should draw a reference line. Okay. So in this video I have drawn the drawings of front view and top view but I kept the drawings very light uh, because when I will tell you uh, how to draw I need not to measure the dimensions and that will save my time of the video. Okay. Now in the lecture we have learned that in the front view there are six faces we have to draw three faces are parallel and three faces are inclined so let us start with the drawing of this particular object so let us start from this face so what is the size of this face length is 16 and the height of this face is 8 so we will leave a one row gap or 10 millimeters gap from the reference line and we will start from this particular row and we will sketch a line of 16 millimeters and we will raise the height on both sides by 8 millimeters and we will complete this face. Now after that we know that uh, the next phase we have to plot this phase because this is the parallel phase. So we have concluded that this phase is at 4 millimeters from this particular point of phase 1. This is 4 millimeter because total is 16 minus 8. So this divided by 2. So this is 4. So from this point we will measure 4 millimeters and we will reach up to this point with the help of scale. We will measure 4 millimeters and we will reach up to this point. And from that point we will draw its height. Its height is 48 minus 8. So this is 40. So from that point we will draw a vertical line of 40 millimeters. And align your scale carefully so that you should draw a vertical line. So after that we know the length of this face is 16. 40 minus 8 divided by 2. So from this line, from this point, we will draw a line of 16 millimeters. Then again, we have to come back by 40 millimeters. So from this point, draw a vertical line carefully by lining your scale with this column. And then we will connect these points to complete the face. Now after that we have to plot this face and it is similar to the first face. 
it means what we will do from this corner we will measure 4 millimeters and we will mark a point 4 millimeters mark a point from that point we will again sketch the height of that face and that height is again how much 40 millimeters then again from this point we will draw its length as 16 then from this point we have to come back by 40 then we will connect these points to draw this face so we are ready with first three parallel faces now let us plot these two inclined faces and in the lecture we have learned the length of this inclined face will be 12 and uh, this point is shared by both the faces it means for this face I will start from this point and I will sketch a line of 12 millimeters this we have learned in the last lecture and we will join these points to get the inclined face and after that we will plot this face in a similar manner because that is exactly same face but at opposite place so 12 and then we will connect these points to get the face so you see we are ready with the, these two inclined faces now we have to plot this inclined face and uh, we know that this point is at 12 mm from this point so from this point we will measure 12 millimeters and we will mark a point and after that we will draw a horizontal line from that point carefully so you see we have represented this face as well now after that what we will do we have to draw projection lines we will align our scale with uh, this particular length carefully and we will draw a continuous thin line in downward direction then with the next point next edge sorry this one and draw a continuous thin line again and make sure your scale should be vertical because these lines must be parallel to each other and perpendicular to plane of projection any variation in their parallelism or perpendicularity will give you wrong results in the top view so draw these lines very carefully these must be thin from all the points So these lines must be parallel to each other, continuous thin and perpendicular to the reference line. Now after that we will plot these three faces. These are parallel faces and the length of these three faces is 40. So we can draw a straight line of 40 millimeters or you can say line in between these two projectors. So that will be of 40. Then the width of these three faces is 8 so from this end we will measure 8 millimeters and from this end we will measure 8 millimeters then we will connect those points to get the width of the face and we will make these lines also thick and after that what we will do we will show these faces so length of first face is 16 and you can see from this edge we have already taken one projector so from on that projector we will just draw a thick line so no need to measure that 16 again because these projectors will help us Fine. similarly from this point we have taken one projector use that projector and make it thick so you see we have represented three faces now after that we have to sketch this face and for this face we will start from this point this point is below this one it means we can start from here so how much length we have to sketch uh, from back it is 36 so from here you can measure 36 so from back remember from back I am measuring 36 and draw vertical line carefully it must be thick 
same we will do on the other side to construct that face so it is again 36 and uh, after that what we will do we don't know this length so we will leave here only now we know this particular face or this edge is at 40 from back so what we will do from back we will draw two lines of 40 millimeters that will construct this face so from back draw two lines of 48 millimeters on this edge as well fine so from back we have drawn 48 millimeters from back total width up to this then from this point for this side for this side and we will connect this also or you can see we have we are taking projector from this edge from this edge so use this projector and use this projector so between these two projectors just draw a thick line now you see how projectors are helping us now we'll just connect these two points to complete those faces these lengths were not given to us in the problem so you see we are ready with the top view also and after that what we'll do we'll erase the extra projectors which are beyond the top view and you can erase these projectors also which are within the view so now we are ready with the front view and top view of this particular object now next is we have to place dimensions so let us start with the length dimension first so how much is the total length it is 40 millimeters so we will line our scale carefully with this length 1 mm gap continuous thin line 1 mm gap continuous thin line and remember this side we have to place around uh, two dimensions one is total length then for this particular face we have to place around two dimensions we have to place so this should be around 20 millimeters 20 25 millimeters so place the first dimension thin line and uh, place close field arrowheads on both sides so over here in gothic style we will write 40 so after that let us place this dimension this is how much this is 16 so draw a continuous thin line after leaving 1 millimeter gap continuous thin line after leaving 1 millimeter gap then draw a thin dimension line here and add close fill arrowheads on both sides of that dimension line so we'll add dimension in gothic style so it is 16 now the next length dimension is 8 millimeters that we can place at the top over here so line your scale with these two points then from here leave around 10 millimeter gap and add dimension line so over here we will add closed fill arrowheads on both sides carefully in 3 ratio 1 so we will write over here in gothic style 8 now we are done with all the length dimensions now let us place width dimensions first of all place total width so that i can place here 1 millimeter gap continuous thin line then from here 1 millimeter gap continuous thin line then place dimension line here it must be vertical and thin and we will add close fill arrowheads on both sides so its dimension is 48 so in gothic style we will mention 48 
so after that uh, we will place remaining width dimensions uh, we can place this 36 so from this point leave one meter gap continuous thin line use same dimension line so we are using parallel dimensioning so add dimension line closed filled arrowheads on both sides of done with that dimension line draw arrowheads carefully 3 ratio 1 and over here we will add 36 now one very important point we have to understand regarding dimensioning see this was given as 36 plus 12 so we have placed the full dimension and we have placed this dimension 36 now no need to place this dimension because this we can find by subtracting 36 from 48 so if you will place this dimension also that will called as duplicate dimensioning so this you should keep in your mind if any total length is divided into let us say two parts then place full length and place the dimension of one part only leave the other part okay so next we have to place this width dimension this is how much this is 8 so that I can place this side so we are using align the system readable from right side vertical dimensions now we are ready with all the width dimensions now let us place height dimension the total height of the object is 48 so let us show that height over here so one millimeter gap continuous thin line then one millimeter gap continuous thin line add dimension line over here it must be vertical and thin then we will place closed field arrowheads on both sides and we will write over here 48 in gothic style so you see I have I have left left around 20 millimeters because I know I have to come two dimensions here next we have to place this one it is 8 so leave one millimeter gap continuous thin line then over here I will place the next dimension so millimeter gap is 10 10 so minimum gap should be 10 between object line and dimension line and then between dimension line and dimension line so I can write over here as 8 so what is the next dimension left I have to show this also so from the view leave one meter gap continuous thin line and that dimension I can place here and add close field arrowheads on both sides so we will say it is how much 12 in gothic style so you see we have placed all the dimensions we are ready with our drawing so what is the next step at the bottom of the drawing over here we will provide one note we will write in gothic style freehand all dimensions are in mm then we will underline it so this is our final answer thank you very much